Hi everyone, this is Scott, your Northwest Geology Guy. I really uh, apologize. Uh, somehow in my screen capture program, the microphone was turned off. So my video, if you've seen it, uh, had no sound. Wonderful. But let's go ahead and redo this real quick. Uh, it's just a short video anyway. But I'm uh, here to tell you about the magnitude 8.0 quake in northern Peru. That was 109.9 kilometers deep. Um, I happened to wake up in the middle of the night, and as always, when I wake up in the middle of the night, I always got to check the, the earthquake map to see if anything hit while uh, I was asleep, and I just had a feeling something big had happened, and um, I was right. Uh, I'm I'm right about probably 70, 75% of the time. I just get a feeling that I need to check it, and sure enough, there's usually something there, but um that a, was a very large uh, subduction zone quake. Um, it wasn't uh, a rupture of the, the main uh, fault, uh, but it was deep in the subducting Nazca plate, and that's what caused it. And I was up for about two hours uh, waiting to see if there was any aftershocks going to occur. And being half asleep, I didn't realize that I knew that with uh, subduction zone quakes like these, they don't produce aftershocks. Because uh, like in a normal uh, uh, crystal fault, um, the fault breaks and or ruptures and the ground resettles and other things uh, tend to move from the stress and that causes your uh, aftershocks. But in uh, deep in the subducting uh, plate, when something moves down there or cracks, that's it. There's, there's no more activity as a general rule. But let's get into this and look at it. Um, and take a look at it. Um, it came up as a, a nine on the the shake map, which that's uh, heavy. We can click on that and we'll show you the map. Down here, the key, and uh, it goes all the way down from like a you know a point five to like a two, not felt, and then works its way up. But we're over here in heavy in a very violent quake. Thank God it occurred out in the, the rainforest and not in a populated area or a city. We'd have seen a lot more destruction and uh, more injuries and possibly even deaths occurring. But um, the thing is that uh, there was a little bit of damage. There was a water tower that uh, partially collapsed. Uh, around 50 homes or so uh, collapsed. But, you know, this is preliminary uh News reports out of that area are going to come in uh, kind of slow. I stayed up for about two hours uh, trying to look for uh, any videos coming out of the area. Um, so that way I could at least get a, a feel of what transpired there. But um, I still haven't seen any. But um, it's uh, that was a very powerful quake. And it was felt uh, six, seven hundred miles away up in... Uh, um, um uh, Columbia all the way down. Um oh no, I can't remember, but it was felt in a, in a large area. And if we go back to the um shake map here, the interactive map, you can see uh it was felt from a, a quite a large area. And as you notice the bigger cities here uh didn't get the the vibrations from it that uh they would have if it would have happened right around the epicenter. But let's go back and uh, I wanted to teach you guys something that you may not have known. But if you want more information on uh, a quake and uh, the area it occurred in, you go to regional information, scroll down. Now you can get this a lot of the time, but in certain parts of the world, uh, USGS hasn't done a workup on the area. And it'll say, you know, none available. But this is a great way to pick up a lot of information about areas that, you you know, you don't live around. But it went through here and talking uh, uh, about what occurs in the area, how it occurs in the area, and uh, past uh, quakes in the area. Uh, in Chile, southern Chile, uh, to the south of here, uh, is where in 1960 a magnitude 9.5 quake, the largest quake ever recorded uh, on Earth, 
that's recorded. Uh, there may have been larger ones in the past, but since man's been here recording them, that's the largest. Even the, the Good Friday 1964 quake in Alaska, uh, the subduction zone quake, was only a 9.2. Um, that This is uh, three points higher, which is probably, if I'm correct, about 300 times larger. Uh, sorry if I'm a little groggy today. It's my first day off, and it's usually my uh, recuperation day from working uh, 36 hours in three days. Um, but uh, this is a great way of picking up new information uh, in areas you're not uh, used to. And uh, I should have known it that there wasn't going to be any aftershocks. But, uh, you know, when I start reading things, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. You know, I stayed up uh, two hours in the middle of the night. Uh, but, you know, I'm a geology junkie anyway. But um, I just thought I'd come on here, talk about it really quickly. Um, if you're on YouTube, Ben Furliolo, uh, he's done, uh, a lot of you guys subscribe to him. Um, he's done a, a workup on it too, so go visit his uh, YouTube page. I don't believe he's done a video on it yet, but uh, check him out too. He's got great seismic information. He's my go-to guy for seismology in uh, the uh, amateur uh, arena. Um, he's very thorough and very knowledgeable, uh, but I'm the geology guy. Uh, he even says that I'm way better than him in geology, but you know, that's why we make a good team. So go over and check Ben out and see uh, what he's uh, done. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And uh, this is Scott signing off.